Hello, good day. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do what is called a retaining wall. The thing that you see here is a retaining wall. The wall is this one. This one is called a cantilever retaining wall. Okay. So I'm going to be using a, an angle of repose of 30 degrees. The soil density, let's assume it's 2.1 kilo newtons per cubic meter. Okay. So uh, it's two meters it's going to retain a mass of about uh, of a height of two meters okay the first thing that we do is this point here it's called the toe the toe of the retaining wall okay so now when you have a, a toe we are going to calculate moments like uh, from this point the mass of the soil is going to cause a rotation of this nature okay then the mass from this point is going to cause a rotation of this nature. So there is a, a, a safety factor of uh, of two that needs to be to be achieved, uh, and some sometimes in the BS is actually 1.5. Okay. So after we've done after we are done with that, we are going to do something that we always do with moments. We calculate what is called um, we calculate the the uh, the value of k which is stiffness then we go for the uh, z which is the lever arm then we calculate the area of steel okay so let's start right the first thing we are going to calculate uh moments that are going to go in and what what is called an overturning moment overturning is when it goes like this okay so the overturning moment we're going to first you have to calculate the force of the soil here so there is what is called KP, which is passive. This one is equal to 1 uh, plus sine theta divided by 1 minus sine theta. Then there is KA, which is active. This is going to 1 minus sine theta divided by 1 plus sine theta. Okay. When we are dealing with KA and KP, this is just... Uh, in relation to two things let me just explain a bit this might take a bit of time but i hope you get it okay if we have a, a soil mass like this okay. if there's pressure here let's say sigma uh, this is the vertical there's going to be there's going to be pressure here sigma h so the relationship between these two things is what is called k p and k a okay now when you are when you have a soil mass like this and then it's moving in that direction and this happens if you move a soil like this it's going to bulk up it's going to move in an upward direction like this if you are moving towards this one uh, is called a k p it's passive then if you have a soil A soil okay if you have a soil like this and then it's moving in a downward trajectory like that this is going to be my k a it's active okay so the relationship between these this this these two is like this one for a flat surf, surface soil so uh, if we have a force here, uh, in soil mechanic terms, this is called the say charge here. So it's going to uh, have a bearing on this soil. It's going to apply a load onto this surface. So the force that we have because of the weight of this soil is going to slide downward towards this one along the yield line, causing this one to move in an outward direction. Okay. It's a bit of too much theory on your part, but I I think you get it. Okay. So as you can see here, the height different from the toe to the top of this thing is going to be in, let's say to this point, rather. It's going to be two meters. So the vertical pressure, which is uh, uh, sigma v is equal to you still remember rho uh, 
g h but these two they amount to this one and then we have the h that is sigma v like this one okay so for us to to calculate the the vertical load on on this on this soil sample here we are just going to calculate it on top here it is zero then on at this point it's going to be two meters okay so let's just deal with that one we are going to say and uh, this one is going to be the the sigma which is the weight density is 2.1 so we are going to say 2.1 times the h which is going to be in this case two meters then we multiply this one is going to be 4.2 kilonewton kilonewtons then at the at the at, at the very top sigma v was equal to the weight which is 2.1 multiplied by zero okay so if we have a soil like this okay at this point the, the thing was zero then at this point the thing was uh, 4.4 kilonewtons okay this is going to be a triangle right this is the the force that we are going to have uh, okay so we want to calculate the force in this direction this was the vertical pressure which is this one so the relationship between sigma v um, is equal to ka since it's an active case sigma h like this uh, sorry it's h the h is supposed to be on this side then the v is on this side so we want to calculate the vertical pressure at this point it's obvious it's a zero as you can see so at the top is going to be zero now sigma h at the base is going to be uh, sigma v in my brackets ka is equal to one minus sine theta divided by one plus sine theta okay so in this case it's going to be 4.4 uh, multiplied by uh, let me look at, let's just see okay so i'm going to type it into my calculator it's one minus sine sine 30 degrees divided by one plus sine 30 degrees equals is going to be one third as you can see here okay so i'm going to type it in one over three like this which is going to be sigma h sigma h like this it's going to be this one multiplied by four comma four equals okay so we are going to have a pressure of 1.46 seven kilonewtons okay that is at the base right so we want to calculate what is called the line of action if you still remember from this point to that point our centroids are as follows this is going to be one this is going to be two so as you can see here what we're going to do we are going to say one over three multiplied by the height which is two meters that is the line of action line of action line of action is equal to this much okay let me just type it into my calculator it's going to be one over three multiplied by two which is going to be so it's going to be 0 0.667 meters okay. right so we are going to calculate the overturning moment over turning sorry about the spellings there over turning moment over turning sorry, moment is equal to force what is the force since this is a triangle the high point here is going to be this value okay we are going to multiply the area of the triangle which is one comma four six seven multiplied by 2 divided by 2 the area of a triangle and we're going to multiply by the line of action which is 0 0.667 okay so that is the overturning moment we're going to get let me just see here okay it's going to be 1.467 multiplied by 2 
then we're going to multiply by 0 0.667 then we're going to divide it all by 2 we're going to have an overturning moment of 0 0.97 comma eight sorry zero comma nine seven eight kilo newton meters this is going to be the moment that is going to uh, lead to it over 10 it's actually very small now we want to we have calculated the overturning moment the moment that is caused by this moving in that direction now what we want to calculate is the moment that is caused by uh, this mass of soil acting at that point as you still remember from this calculation, we found out that the pressure, the pressure at the base is going to be 4,4. Okay. So now this one is going to be 4,4 from this point to that point. Okay. So we want to calculate uh, the moment. So the moment is going to be this force, the force from this point to that point. This is going to be a UDO. So let's just go for that. It's 4, 4, 4 uh, multiplied by the distance, which is 2. Then multiplied by the distance from the point here, which is going to be, uh, if this is 2 meters, this is going to be 2.3. Uh, it's going to be 1.3. So multiplied by 1.3. Okay, so these two, they, call, they constitute the size of the moment. Then this one, is going, this one is going to be the force. This one is going to be the distance. If we multiply these two, we are going to come up with the moment. Okay, so what is it going to be? 4,4 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1.5 equals, it's going to be 11.44 kilonewton meters. Okay, let me just go back to somewhere here. I think I made a mistake. Let me just correct it. There's a mistake here. Let me explain. Okay, the distance, the one third, is from this point to here. It should have been to this point. Okay. So what we should have done is, on this part, we were supposed to say 1,467 multiplied by 2 divided by 2, this one being the force. Then we're going to multiply it by the distance to 0 0.667 plus, so plus 0 0.5, which is the additional distance to the focal. What is going to be the answer here? Let me just check. Okay, it's going to be 1,46 times 2 divided by divided by 2. Then we're going to multiply that with uh, 0, 0,667 plus 0, 0,5 okay what is the moment it's going to be 1,704 kilo newton meters okay so factor of safety factor of safety is when you divide so factor of safety is equal to uh, retaining moment divided by overtaining moment Okay, which is going to be retaining moment is one comma is eleven comma four four divided by one comma seven. This number should be always uh, greater than two, which is going to be eleven comma four four divided by one comma seven one comma seven zero four equals. Okay, let me just check. Okay, it's supposed to be a zero. Okay which is uh, more than enough since it's going to be 6,71, which is greater than 2. So it's okay. This is a safe slope. Okay, what do we mean by safe slope? What happens if we have uh, a thing like this? If you have a retaining wall and you discover that there's a crack on top, let's say the wall is going like that, okay, then you discover there's a crack that is forming on the ground like this. This means that the, the, the slope, this thing is trying to overturn. The, this is called a, 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 face, a, face, a face failure. Okay. Once you have that, it means there was something wrong with your retaining wall in the first place. So I'm not going to go deep into that. Maybe 
if you are interested i will do a lecture on that in in the near future okay so this this is what we were trying to check for when we checked for factor of safety okay now that we have uh, calculated this we want to calculate uh, we now want to calculate for the reinforcement okay. so what we then do we use this moment for the base then we use this moment to calculate for the reinforcement in the wall then we will calculate for shear but i think i i have to end here maybe on the next lecture i will tell you about the how we go about calculating the reinforcement but for now i've covered this topic okay